Okay guys, so what we got here today is a Mesa quad preamp. Um, at the time I bought it, it did not work. If we went and did a whole bunch of stuff to it, it did work. Um, and I'm very happy about that. Also went and installed uh, the MIDI board into it because um, this particular, particular preamp uses a very specific foot controller that, um, that's discontinued and um, very hard to change the channels on it without that. Um, and then in addition to the MIDI board, also um, installed some switches on the front of it so you can go and change the channels with, um, with those um, just for convenience. Didn't do anything to affect the tone of it, but um, added a whole bunch of stuff to make channel switching easier for it. In general, I'm, I'm really happy with this quad preamp. It's got pretty much all the, uh, the classic 80s metal tones that you'd want in there, all the Mark series type stuff, Mark II C+, Mark IV, that, that, kind of, um, that kind of vibe to it. Um, the clean channel on it is really, really good as well. The spring reverb in it is really, really good as well. And um, yeah, great preamp, very inspiring preamp. So um, that's the end of the intro. We'll just get right into everything that's going on with it. Okay, so here it is. The quad preamp that I ordered maybe a year and a half ago. We'll open it up, see what it looks like. quality packing material. A uh, frequent Walgreens shopper, I guess. Wrap. A little more like it. A little more reasonable. World's dullest box cutter. Ta-da! Okay, so you look at the top of it. It's got a little bit of rust on it. Maybe um, a little bit of water damage, or at least was stored in a non-humidity controlled room. That's a little too bad. Uh, looks a little crusty around this side too. We'll open it up, see what's in there. Ooh, well, it looks like somebody tried to do a repair or something or other over there. Wonder what that's all about. So now on all their amps, they usually have um, whoever assembled them sign them and then date them. And that to me looks like the signature. Can't really make it out. I think I see 88 on there. So it looks to me like this thing came from 1988. And there's the rev of the board. Looks like this board was made in 86. Lighting for these videos isn't the greatest, but these LDRs, I don't know if you can see that this one looks discolored from all the other ones. So if I had to guess what's wrong with this thing, it's probably that. Okay, so 
from last time we were working on this thing. Took out the reverb tank, tried um, scrubbing it off using this 3M rubbing compound stuff. Take a look at that. That got most of the rust and other things off. Um, I jumpered the fuse out just so I could power the thing on and test it. I don't recommend doing that. That's um, that's a bad idea. I got lucky with that one. Um, the fact that it didn't blow up on me means I'll probably try it again, but I really shouldn't. So once it powers on, I'm able to go and check that all the channel switching features work. Uh, the EQ works, the reverb works, pretty much everything in this thing works. I think what I'm going to do to it is replace the fuse holder with um, the new one that I got here, just because I, I couldn't find the uh, mating part for it. Replace the uh, electrolytic caps that have been in here since 1986 or 1988. And um, that's pretty much it for it. Okay, so you ready for this? Helix, quad pre, helix, quad pre. Oh yeah. Okay, so in addition to the MIDI board in here, we also went and added on the front panel these three channel selecting switches that let you go and change all the channels just right from the front panel. Interestingly enough, the holes to um, add these switches were already on the, um, on the main chassis. Like this back panel that you can actually read, it's just like a faceplate that sticks on there. I'll just show them to you. I think you can see there's a hole already there for a switch or for something. And I just went and repurposed them for these three switches. I um, actually saw that trick in another video. It does a shootout of um, all these Mesa preamps. I'll link to that one. So for right now, it works pretty good. I can go to lead one, rhythm one, change this. I go over to lead two, rhythm two. Yeah, there it all is. So in addition to the MIDI board, we also went and replaced the, um, the blue electrolytic caps that were in there. So these big guys, replaced them with these um, nice Nichicon, um, 315 volt instead of 300 volt, uh, 105C instead of 65C, and 10,000 hour caps. So those are the main filter caps, and they're gonna be good for, for a very long time. Some of the other caps, they're there for um, like the tube supplies. Um, those I weren't able to get um, 10,000 hour, 105C caps, so they're 85C caps and maybe, I don't know, 5,000 hour, which still is a very, very good cap compared to the one that was put in here in the 80s. So here we are, we'll take a quick trip through the schematic of this thing, show you how everything's hooked up, and um, some of the challenges that are involved in that. So, we'll come down here to the channel switching page. And this was done very conveniently in that here are all the external switches and you can just go and connect the uh, various outputs of the MIDI board to these. So rhythm one, lead one, rhythm two, lead two. Um, those are the channel switches and then these I connected just the, um, the output switches. And all those work um, by just pulling down on uh, on these on the MIDI board, just like you would with a uh, tip to sleeve or a short to sleeve style um, foot switch, and that worked out great, with the exception of reverb cancel. So that's right here. 
Reverb cancel works by um, shorting the uh, the output of the reverb circuit to ground, basically eliminating all, all of your reverb, or same effect as turning the reverb level knob all the way down. And that works out great if you're doing it with an actual switch or a relay, but if you're doing it with um, with a BJT or a FET, as the MIDI board does, doesn't doesn't quite work out so well, because the um, FETs will only block voltage in one direction, and this is going to be both directions. You're going to get an AC signal here. So I had to repurpose um, the mute switch on that MIDI board, which for other amplifiers will actually mute the output speaker, which is also an AC, AC voltage, and put it here. Um, it's a little bit of overkill for that, but it gets the job done. So the other thing worth talking about with this one is the EQ um, schematic. So here are some notes that I made while debugging the EQ, uh, just the, the bias voltages of the thing. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit uh, about, the, uh, about the EQ here um, in, in pretty broad terms. So first stage of the EQ is just a buffer. That's all that this, um, that's all that this transistor is doing. It's probably an emitter follower. So input here. Output there. These are set up usually as a, a current mirror. Um, it's typically what you see at the input stage of a uh, op amp. And between the two of them, you have a whole bunch of tank circuits, which are tuned to the different frequencies of um, of whichever band you're going and uh, and changing. So, one thing I found about this. Or, or okay, and then finally you have what should be an output buffer, but if you look at how it's drawn, it distinctly jumps over the output. So as this is drawn, this circuit would not do anything, and it's it's more than just um, an unfortunate you know oversight. I, I think this is intentionally drawn incorrectly here. Uh, future schematics, things for like the Mark IV and Mark V, they'll have the same EQ, but drawn correctly. Okay, here we go.